Hello, I am Dr. Sonia Noor from Buffalo Endovascular and Vascular Surgical Associates. And today I'm going to be walking you through the steps of transcarotid arterial revascularization. We also refer to this procedure as TCAR. The goal of this video is to ensure that you, our patients, understand this role of this innovative treatment option that we have started doing in our practice to prevent stroke. I hope that this video, the patient resource guide, and our website can help educate patients and put your mind at ease and your families so when you come in to be evaluated or to have the procedure done, you will feel more comfortable. The carotid arteries are a set of arteries that travel up your neck and deliver blood and oxygen to your brain and head. As we age, our blood vessels tend to build up fatty deposits or plaque, which can limit blood flow. The narrowing of blood vessels in the carotid arteries due to plaque is called carotid disease. Usually, carotid disease does not have any associated symptoms. However, narrowing in the arteries can become important and significant enough to limit blood flow and oxygen to the brain and increase the risk of stroke. In addition, plaque buildup in the carotid arteries can break off and travel to the brain, causing either a TIA or a stroke. That is when it is called symptomatic but again, most of the time it is asymptomatic. As a patient with carotid disease, it is important to recognize the signs of stroke, which include loss of vision, balance loss, an uneven smile, weakness of one or both of your arms, and slurred speech. If you experience any of the symptoms, it's usually for a short duration of time, and it may normalize after that, that is called a TIA. If it does not normalize, it means you could be continuing to have a stroke and 911 should be called right away, either way, even if the symptoms completely resolve. Fortunately, the TCAR procedure was developed as a treatment option to reduce the risk of stroke by opening up the carotid arteries with a stent to improve the blood flow to the brain and prevent the plaque from breaking off. The TCAR procedure is an inpatient procedure, which means you have to be admitted to Gates Vascular Institute and then Buffalo General Hospital. The TCAR procedure usually lasts from start to finish for about two to three hours. Most of our patients are put to sleep under general anesthetic for the duration of the procedure, unless you don't qualify for it for some other reason like lung issues, etc. Throughout the procedure, we monitor you with neuromonitoring technology so that we can detect small changes that can occur in your brain activity while you're under general anesthetic, and that helps us prevent any further complications that can happen during the procedure. The surgery starts by making a small incision at the bottom of the neck. It's about two to four centimeters long, just above the collarbone, and that allows us to get access into the carotid arteries. As you can see on the image on the left, the plaque is located higher up in the neck region. In addition, we access a vein in your leg so we can allow placement of a small straw, which is called a sheath, and that allows us to remove the artery, blood, and the plaque with it, filter the blood, and return the blood back into the vein, which is called the reversal of flow, which I will explain later in the video. Next, a specialized sheath the size of a straw is placed through the puncture into the carotid artery that's done under direct vision. This allows us to get pictures of the blood flow and confirm the amount of narrowing there is in the carotid artery. And after that, we can put a stent through it. The same tube that is placed in the carotid artery is now connected into the vein in the leg as we described before, and the reversal of flow is started. This allows blood to travel from the carotid artery through a filter into the leg. This reversal of flow allows the blood flow to be maintained during the surgery and it minimizes the risk of any plaque debris traveling up into the brain causing a stroke as we place the stent. The filter is located in the tube system, collects the plaque and ensures it does not travel back into the vein. This flow reversal system is only temporary and is usually not harmful. We do monitor the patients during the reversal of flow and should it be interfering with blood flow, we can improve the blood pressure and do partial reversal of flow as well. 
Next, as the flow reversal system is running, we confirm the narrowing with our angiograms and now we place a stent that is appropriate for the size of the vessel, usually followed by a balloon angioplasty and sometimes it may not be. Once the stent has been placed, this is usually done with flow reversal. Again, we collect the plaque and the debris through the filter. We usually get a confirm confirmation angiogram to confirm we are happy with the placement of the stent. This picture shows you placement of the sheet through the neck. Once that has been done, we start reversal of flow, which is connected to a filter and to the femoral vein or the vein in the leg, so that the blood is sucked out while we are manipulating the artery. This picture also shows you the wire has already been placed through the lesion. And once that has been done and reversal of flow has been started, we now put the balloon up. You can see the balloon going up here to create a little space. And once the balloon is removed, now you see the stent going up and forming a, a scaffolding along the plaque to support the blood flow now through the stent into the artery. So there's no more plaque limiting flow through the artery. Once this is completed, we usually get a confirmation picture or an angiogram which shows us everything looks good or is it if another ballooning is required. After the procedure, you are left with a small incision just around the collarbone, which after the sheath is removed, we usually close up with dissolved, dissolvable sutures. When you come back and see us in the office for a follow-up visit, you will notice some uh, butterfly-like bandages which should come off within the first two weeks and the incision beneath that usually heals quite well. Most patients are discharged from the hospital the following day. The newly placed stent in the carotid artery helps the push, put the patients at ease as they now have much better blood flow through this area and a significant reduction in the risk of stroke. If you have any questions, please be sure to refer to your patient guidebook, surgical instruction seat, and our website, and as well as our staff are happy to help you with more information. Thank you again for choosing Buffalo Endovascular Surgical Associates and our physicians for your carotid care.